We are ready to go. So the next thing I'm gonna do is before I start, I wanna make sure I bleed out pressure. So I'm gonna go in to the heat soak. I'm just gonna bump that valve and I'm gonna dump pressure. And I wanna start my fusion in that way. So I'm set up, I'm not up against the heater yet. So I'm gonna hit start fusion. And notice we're, we're at the bottom of pressure. You want it just to be lower than, than your fusion pressure. So I have all the details I need for the fusion right here on the screen, plus a timer. And so all I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna close it up. So I'm gonna shift down into fusion pressure, which is already preset. And then I'm gonna close it up and you're gonna see that rise up to beat up pressure. So our beat up says it at 205. We're sitting right about 208, well within the specification. And so now what I'm gonna be looking for so I'm gonna be looking for what ASTM says is an indication of melt. You're obviously gonna to have to follow the standard that you have chosen, but I'm looking, I'm inspecting all the way around, and as soon as I have met that requirement, then I'm gonna shift down. And this is a really easy process, and something that's really good for the data logger is, is I'm just gonna take this, I'm gonna move this into the heat position, and you're gonna see that pressure drop. And you're, you have all the time in the world, you're gonna drop, let it get down to that drag pressure. So drag was 24, we're at 22. We wanna be at or below drag pressure. It does not mean we're at zero pressure. What we're doing is, is we're actually translating interfacial pressure. Drag pressure represents zero interfacial, but it's okay to be reading some pressure as long as it's at or below drag. So that's really important and we're seeing that here. So we're holding that pressure. Now that we've, we've bottomed out, I'm gonna shift this into the neutral position. I'm gonna reset my timer. For this pipe size, I actually don't have a time. I have a bead size. Um, and so a good rule of thumb uh, really comes down to four and a half minutes of, uh, per inch of wall thickness on the time. Uh, so in this case, it's gonna go for uh, about a minute, minute and a half, or until I meet that bead size. So we're gonna let this go on. And you can see when I shifted to neutral, what's happening is this is a center blocked valve. So I have actually, I'm trapping pressure into that cylinder, right? And I'm in neutral, so no, that's not gonna move in any direction. Uh, what you're gonna see though is all valves have a, a slight leak rate and every hydraulic system is slightly different. So what you're seeing is, is that little bit of bleed off, but it doesn't have to drop down to zero. It's gonna bleed off to wherever it's gonna bleed off and that's all okay. I really just wanna make sure that I'm, I'm not applying any pressure to those pipe ends. And so we're set up, we're ready to go. Now that we've met, uh, pretty much met our heat soak, we, we're meeting our bead size uh, in theory. So now the next step is we're gonna do that open close. So again, really easy. I'm gonna shift down into my fusion pressure. I'm still in neutral, so no force is gonna be applied. And then what I'm gonna do is my motions are gonna be, I'm gonna open the carriage, I'm gonna remove the, the heater, I'm gonna inspect my pipe ends, I'm gonna close and then put my heater back in the bag. And the data logger is going to record everything. I'm really not focused on what's going on here. I'm focused on the operation. So now we're ready to do that. I'm going to open, I'm going to inspect, and I'm going to close, put my heater away. Real easy. You can see that spike up. So you can see where I'm opening. Uh, there's a little tick mark. That's right, exactly where I'm, I'm starting the closing operation. And then you'll see a little spike whenever the pipe ends come together. That's perfectly okay. That is the hydraulic system doing what it needs. It's running up against and it's deadheading. The valve has to respond to that. And it does right back at, at roughly what our fusion pressure range is sitting at 208. I'm gonna reset my timer and we're gonna let this run the full cool time, which is six minutes, uh, 37 seconds. We, we would check our beat up here. We can also identify our open close time. So in this case, it's 15 seconds. We easily did that. We weren't rushing, pretty much did it with, with one hand operation, controlling our heater as well. So there's no, there's no rush in that regards, just do it smoothly and you can see how easy it was and everything that's recorded here on the data logger. So now we've got our full fuse cool time, which was six minutes, 37 seconds in this case. Uh, so now we're ready to, be, uh, to complete our fusion. So we're gonna go ahead and hit the done button while we still have pressure. Is this joint complete? Yes, it is. And then we move on to any notes. And this is a good time for the operator if something happened during the site or if they have to document anything specific, they can enter notes however they wish. And then you're also gonna use the camera in this case and you can get in and take a, a photo of that, that final bead up. Um, and you can get those that double rollback bead. Uh, take as many photos as you want, try to get different angles uh, as well. 
document more of the site. You can back up from the process, show the site as well. All really important aspects uh, to documenting this process. And then once you're gonna do that, as long as you're connected to the internet and you have that vault account logged in, this joint has already gone off and is being stored in the vault.